Now, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Could soon be an expression relegated to history. It seems those names do indeed hurt, which has prompted new guidelines banning sexist language in schools. Well, in a moment, we'll be speaking to the feminist activist and comedian Kate Smurthwaite and Jake Wallace-Simons, associate editor at The Mail Online. But first, here's some of those sexist phrases that those guidelines are aiming to tackle. Jeers such as sissy or don't be a girl are to be banned, as well as man up to boys when they might be upset and referring to a girl as a lesbian because of her interest. These are all phrases which will be banned soon. Well, Kate Smurthwaite and Jake Wallace-Simons are here to discuss these new guidelines. Kate, if I can uh, come to you first. We were hearing there some of these phrases that are going to be banned, things like man up, but it's not just the children in schools who are apparently using these phrases, it's also teachers as well, isn't it? Are you shocked by the findings of these reports? Well, I guess what I'm really shocked by is that this even needs saying. I mean, we were, I mean, we haven't, you know, sat down and had a discussion for a very long time about is it all right to use racist language in schools? Of course it's not. And what, you know, what I guess I'm surprised at is that this this has to be discussed. It's a shame, um, but it seems that it, it does. It seems like these kind of things are on the rise, and in, and perhaps that's unsurprising. I think we see a lot of these kind of pieces of language used um, on TV and in the media these days. And um, we've seen, you know, everything from sort of Keith Lemon to dapper laughs. These kind of things do get said these days unfortunately and so I think it's important that we make it clear in schools that it's not acceptable and that you know using this kind of language isn't okay but I also think we need to sort of challenge the wider cultural situation uh, in which this kind of language has become normalized because it's obviously not helping there is you know a huge gender divide in this country in terms of pay in terms of violence against women in terms of all sorts of issues and we have to tackle it you know in every direction we can and one of those ways obviously is making sure that we raise children in a good healthy equal environment where they're taught their gender is not a predeterminant of what they, they can or can't achieve in life. Jake, what do you make of this? Um, the guidelines are suggesting that, uh, that sexist language should be just as bad or treated just as seriously as racist language. Do you think that's, that's fair and that we should be giving them similar priorities? Well, superficially, uh, that would seem to be the case. But if you look at the detail of the report, uh, it's a shocking indictment of the state of modern Britain because the way in which the report proposes to enforce these guidelines uh, is by setting up squads of pupils, of girls, uh, to go around policing other students and reporting them uh, if they use language which is not PC. And we're not talking about rape jokes. We're not talking about stuff that is overtly racist or rather sexist, sorry. We're talking about saying things like man up or calling each other a sissy. And does the government really have not, nothing better to do and nothing better to spend their money on? than encouraging schools to set up these pupil squads. I mean, are they going to have uniforms? Are they going to have salutes? Are they going to be encouraged next to, you know, inform on their parents if they use non-PC language? And if you look at the, the, the school system today, there are some serious challenges. I mean, it's under-resourced. The teachers are being poorly paid. Teacher morale is low. Funding is being cut uh, all over the place, recently, for example, from sixth form colleges. And yet the government is spending money on trying to get students to police other students to stop them from telling each other to man up. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. And for a supposedly tolerant society, this is remarkably intolerant. Kate, what do you make of that argument, then, that this is money, potentially, which is going to be spent on the wrong things? And in, in effect, you're just going to have girls effectively dobbing on their classmates and saying, well, he said something horrible about, m about me or about my friend. Well, you know, first of all, to describe people who have been asked to kind of go around and, and check what language is being used as, as a squad uh, or as police or whatever, the fact is that schools have always operated a system of having monitors and prefects and things like this whose job is to watch out for problems. And indeed, any pupil in a school who hears somebody using derogatory language, I hope it wouldn't even need saying that you should go and report that. Um, but, you know, but in some ways I do agree with some of what Jake is saying in that I think there are much more important uh, ways that we can improve uh, so I don't think it's about the money because there's a trivial amount of money in the scheme of things that we should be looking at why this has come about. And I, I would point to two things. You know, first of all, we've got schools now where teachers don't have to be fully qualified. Uh, you know, free schools and academies are able to hire teachers who haven't done teacher training. And I think if they did a, a straightforward amount of teacher training, of course, in there would be really important and useful information on how to deal with these kind of problems, how to, you know, make sure pupils have, have understood what's okay and what isn't okay and what to do if they run into something that's 
that's not okay. So there absolutely is an issue that underfunded schools, is this going to you know, manage to paper over the cracks? Absolutely not. What we need to do is have properly qualified teachers in all schools. And the other thing that free schools and academies that have been brought in are now doing is that they don't have to stick to the national curriculum. So a lot of schools are literally not teaching sex education anymore. And I mean, this is, this is terrifying. This is absolutely horrific. Um, and, you know, great news, you're not going to be called a sissy, but bad news, you're getting zero sex education yeah. uh, throughout your school years. I mean, the, the, the balance is still that the Conservatives are doing a terrible job on education. And as it happens, this is one tiny little area in which I think, you know, that they're, they're saying something which should be obvious, but, you know, but is still right and okay. correct and accurate. Okay, um, well, but Jake, there's a lot, lot more that needs doing. I, I just want to pick up on that point with Jake, actually. There is an argument, isn't there, or pr presumably, that if you suddenly say to girls that they shouldn't be doing anything that's so, say, girly or sissy-like or anything like that, that actually they then feel that they have to do uh, subjects perhaps that they don't like or have to do certain sports that they wouldn't like and things like that. So you're actually kind of, by trying to free up the kind of, or get rid of gender-specific rules in schools, you're actually telling girls that they can't be girl-like. Well, I think, I mean, obviously language matters and I would never defend the use of overtly sexist, uh, you know, derogatory language, you know, rape jokes or anything like that. But I think we need a reality check here. I mean, we're not talking about the use of the N-word in the deep south of the United States. We're talking about using phrases like man up. And I don't find man up particularly uh, sexist. If somebody told me to woman up, I would have no objection to that. Um, I'd, and, and, you know, we're raising a, a generation of children who feel that they have the divine right never to be made to feel uncomfortable or else it's somebody else's fault. And now we're adding to that, not only that, but they have the right to call out, as people say, other people if they use terms that are not deemed to be sufficiently PC. I mean, we saw recently what happens when the ultra-feminist hardcore squad gets into a sort of lynch mob mentality and attacks uh, an academic who made a, a joke that was perceived to be slightly PC, and he was hounded out of his job. And now it feels like the government are trying to groom children to join their ranks when they get older. And okay. it just strikes me as absolutely absurd. OK, well, I have to leave it there. That's all we've got time for. Uh, I think one of the reasons, perhaps, that you wouldn't get woman up as uh, something you've been told to because that phrase just simply doesn't exist and perhaps that's part of the problem in the first place. But thank you both, uh, Kate Smurthwaite and Jake Wallace-Simons, uh, for your thoughts on that today. Thank you.